Good morning, everyone. Time for worship again, and let's begin our worship with Bible text. Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11. Let's read today's text together. For I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for welfare and not for calamity, to give you a future and a hope. You know, Jeremiah at this time was going on a mission. Uh, actually, they were taken captive, but he, being a prophet, was on a mission. As some of you may know, Pastor Jay is going on a mission to Cambodia and Philippines this coming Thursday. Your encouraging note or offering would be appreciated. I also went on a many mission trips and also became a full-time missionary in 2011. I went out to Korea to minister to lots of different people groups in Korea since then. What is mission? Some of you may ask. Do we have to go out to a foreign country? Mission is the gracious, forgiving, long-suffering, merciful, loving heart of God, touching and mending, healing, encouraging, and empowering the hearts of those who are sick, lame, blind, suffering, and lost. When we come to understand such heart of God for us, our hearts begin to change. And then our attitude, action, habits, and character. We also worship God, serve others in church, invite others to believe in Christ, and go into mission trips to different parts of the world because our life has changed and we want to share changed life, changed attitude, and changed perspective of life with those who are in need. We have to think then, what triggers such transformation of life? I believe the mission commissioned by Jesus Christ triggers such transformation. It is the indispensable link between the transforming power of God to the helpless, hopeless, and hapless people. The Israelites in today's passage were like that. They were being taken captive. The people of God taken captivity by pagan king of the world. From where would their help come? I came to America when I was 15 years old. I couldn't study much and I didn't have any friends and I had lots of time. So I began to deliver newspaper uh, and cut grass uh, to make some uh, extra money. So one day I was kind of uh, delivering newspaper uh, and then there was this, this heavy rain all of a sudden, the summer rain. Uh, but you know when it rains, uh, you'll see a lot of these worms coming out of ground uh, to breed, they say, because you know when water comes, soaks the ground, uh, they cannot breed, so what they do is they come outside from their holes uh, and then to the sidewalk so they can breed. Uh, but then, you know, because rain is very quick, uh, a lot, but quick, and then sun comes out, now before they dry up, they have to go back to their own hole or their own place. And I was just uh, kind of avoiding stopping on them and running uh, and then delivering newspaper, uh, and then by the time you deliver finish, uh, the sun comes out uh, and ground begins to dry, and as I walk back home, and I see these worms, really big, uh, I don't know, Korean worms are about that big, but then uh, worms in U.S. <laughs> about this big, sometimes it stretches and becomes this long, uh, and they're, they're trying to go back to their own holes, uh, but then because the sunlight is very strong, uh, the road sidewalks uh, dries up uh, and then a lot of these worms, uh, not being able to get back in time, uh, it begins to dry uh, and it becomes very, very difficult to, to go back to their own hole. So, you know, I didn't have anything to do, so I kind of pick up a uh, wood branch uh, and use it as chopsticks and sometimes you just uh, scoop them up uh, and then you just throw them into the grass. Uh, and then from grass, they find their way home. Uh, but then, you know, I found one large worm about four inches, about, about this long, you know, four inches away from the grass, from wet area. Uh, but then it kind of died trying to get back to its own hole. Uh, dried up, uh, dried up. It looked, it looked kind of sad 
uh, it was pretty chunky and looks healthy when it was wet, but then it kind of dried up. Uh, and I was thinking, oh man, only four inches away, it died. Uh, and also I was thinking, if I had come, uh, had I come a little earlier, this might have lived because, you know, I would have picked it up and then put it back to the grass. But then again, one more thought. I felt like I was that, that worm hmm? trying to live, uh, coming out of my own hole uh, and trying to get back to my own hole and just dead, dried up, stepped on by other people or other things. Uh, you know, it's like uh, we, we, our family, a whole family came to America to make a living, to be successful and trying everything we can. And not just our own family, but the many other Korean families, immigrant families, and even those immigrants these days. They try hard, they try everything, uh, but then it seems like this warm, like this warm, where you dry up and you die. You know, I kind of imagined myself coming to America, uh, to Ohio somewhere, uh, delivering newspaper and just picking up a few worms and putting it back into the grass. I, I felt like I was like that worm out of nowhere, trying to make a living, trying to be successful, but then not being able to do anything. And then, you know, four years later, uh, I went to college, uh, went to a church, and even went to a retreat. And at that retreat, the message of the speaker grabbed my heart. And that message was based on Isaiah chapter 41, verse 14. And he says, you warm Jacob, I will help you. You like warm Jacob, I will help you. Uh, you know, it felt like God was speaking to me. It reminded me of that scene where I was picking up those worms and putting back into the grass and finding that worm that died, dried up. And I realized at that time, wow, wow. Even though I'm like this worm, uh, because God was actually literally telling Israelites, uh, like warm you, Jacob, I will help you. God wants, wanted, to me, wanted to help me. And not only he wants to help, he is loving me. You know, that was the first time I realized somebody or God loved me. Even though I knew my parents loved me, never ever I felt it or even experienced it or even heard it. But at that time, God was speaking to my heart through the speaker that not only did he love me, but he actually wanted to help me. You know, this is what mission is, conveying the heart of God to the people who are helpless, hopeless, and hapless. And there are three essential ingredients in mission. First, flesh and bones. And flesh and bones meaning literal manpower, people power, men and women, boys and girls, going out to the field and doing the ministry, doing the work of God. It'll take actual hard work, physical labor, toils and sweats of real people. Jeremiah being in prison, thrown into a well, became the message of God. His life was the living message of God to those people. Mission is where our lives becoming the message of future and hope where we are. It is okay to pray for missions. It is okay to send money. It is okay to encourage through SNS, but not enough, not even come close. Mission is the heart of God, touching, mending, healing, restoring the hearts of the people through the hands of the people of God. This is why actually we must be there in person, heart to heart, person to person, face to face, interaction. And this is why God came to us in person of Jesus Christ. This is why we must go to the ends of the earth. And this is why Pastor Jay is going. This is why I am going. And this is why all the missionaries are going in person, in action. Why? Because mission begins 
with this kind of person-to-person -person interaction. Second, mission needs money. With manpower must come money, financial resource. Uh, there must be financial support. Praying for mission is important, but prayer alone is not enough. There must be financial support. Praying for mission is important, but prayer without money is like sending a picture when you really need a person. If our money that will perish can be used to save eternal lives, what could be worth more than that? How much money did Elvis Presley leave behind? Well, like I said earlier, all of it. How much money did his daughter leave behind? All of it as well. And store up your treasure where it really counts. And third for mission, manpower, money, and then tears. Missions require shedding of tears. Jeremiah was called weeping prophet. Jesus also wept while on earth. Shedding tears means that your heart is broken. When Jeremiah saw the Israelites being defeated, displaced, disoriented, depleted, it broke his heart. The brokenness of his heart broke his people. The broken heart of God over broken people broke his heart. And this is where he began to proclaim the heart of God, shedding his own tears. For I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for welfare and not for calamity to give you a future and a hope. What breaks your heart? Mission is shedding tears with the people as we embrace their pain right now, right away, before it's too late. I believe this kind of work of God through the missionaries of God, people of God, will truly transform the lives of the people. And you know what? You and I are missionaries. You and I are like the ones that God is sending out into the world to touch people's lives and transform their lives, transform their future, giving them hope, giving them prosperity. And this is the call of God, not only to pastors and leaders of the church, but to all people of God, those who have experienced God's heart, those who have known the heart of God, love of God. Now it's our time to go out into the mission field. I'm not talking about outside the country, but where God has placed us, we can be missionaries.